वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग विद दी टीचिंग्स ऑफ श्री निसर्ग दत्ता महाराज फ्रॉम द बुक आई एम दैट नाउ आई एल रीड फ्रॉम द बुक सो द क्वेश्चन सेज शारदा देवी वाइफ ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण परमहंसा used to scold his disciples for too much effort she compares them to mangoes on the tree which are being plucked before they are ripe why hari she used to ask wait till you are fully ripe mellow and sweet and to this maharaj replies he says how right she was there are so many who take the dawn for the noon a mo- <clears throat> a momentary experience for full realization and destroy even the little they gain by excess of pride you see this is a very common trap which a seeker can fall into generally what happens is that we experience spiritual awakening and we encounter an experience in during that awakening and we get so absorbed in the experience we want that experience to happen over and over again because we have experienced bliss we have experienced silence and now we yearn for that and you know so he says here maharaj says here that if you hurry if you make haste what basically happens is that the pride takes over that i am special i had an experience and that chase for the repeat of experience and that identification with the experience itself stops the process of deliverance so he associates he calls he says that there is a difference between the dawn and the noon and now this is my own interpretation what i think he means by dawn dawn is the spiritual awakening it is the beginning most people think that spiritual awakening is the end no spiritual awakening is the beginning and after having a spiritual awakening it so happens that our troubles begin because the whole notion of life the structure of life the ego the nature of ego the nature of involvement in the worldly affairs dealing with relationships all those problems now begin to manifest after spiritual awakening the friendships begin to break apart certain friendships certain associations fall away and i have a whole video on that subject and that is what is the meaning of dawn that means you have had a glimpse of the reality but that alone is not sufficient that alone does not mean anything what matters most is the deliverance now deliverance is what ramesh balsekar called as the embodiment of the truth in daily living the peace that one experiences in daily living what that means is that the glimpse of the infinite reality that you have had has to reflect as peace and daily living and which here i believe maharaj refers to as the noon which is the culmination of seeking end of seeking so the spiritual awakening is one thing the deliverance of that knowledge because it is very easy to say that i am not the doer yes intellectually it makes all the sense i am not the doer because the doer is not there in deep sleep doer is not your continuous experience hence it cannot be the ultimate reality the person the way you imagine yourself i am so and so my name 
my occupation my religion my associations my likes dislikes all that is just a a cover up on on that reality on the ultimate reality which is your true nature so your true nature is consciousness and when that knowledge comes to you through an insight it gives tremendous bliss but then for it to go deeper into your being for you to completely embody that message that takes time and that happens not through your effort that happens through the process of life the life itself presents you with different uh, situations sometimes challenging situations ill health disease death decay financial setbacks all these things teach us the suffering teaches us and that is how that deliverance takes place that is how we are that is how we get to know how resilient we are to the current situation how deep the message of non doership has percolated so and maharaj further says i'll read his words he says humility and silence are essential for a sadhaka however advanced only a fully ripened gnani can allow himself complete spontaneity now two things here first he says humility and silence now everything starts with humility it starts let me put it this way if you come across a master now i am not a master i don't consider myself to be a master but if you come across a master and you go to the master with your own preconceived notions that i know this i know that and a lot of people are always in a hurry to say what they want to say and it so happens i come across a lot of people you know who would just memorize all the verses from the scriptures and they will recite the verses with pride but i can see through and through that they do not understand the gravity of those words they don't understand the deep meaning of what they are saying they have just memorized it through repetition so what essentially they are doing is they are just imitating someone so humility is the first thing when i used to go to advaita teachers i even now i go to them i never speak a word i ask them a question if there is a doubt but i am never in a hurry to express myself to empty myself to them because i listen and when i'm listening i ensure that that listening is total that i leave behind all my concepts all my preconceived notions of what reality should or should not be yes afterwards it's okay to analyze it afterwards it's perfectly fine to reflect on it to be doubtful of it is also fine to question it is also fine to critically analyze it is okay but while you are in front of the master and the master is saying something listen listen totally with complete attention not with the filtered attention and this is one of the greatest lessons because without this no spiritual progress as you imagine it to be is possible no peace is possible because if you come armed with your own concepts 
to a teacher you will get entangled in your own thinking process because here maharaj is trying to destroy your concepts maharaj is not teaching you anything new maharaj is saying that whatever you know whatever you think of whatever comes out of the thinking mind is an illusion and he says that the reality is consciousness and very beautifully he says it here i'll, I'll just read these words he says before the world was consciousness was in consciousness it comes into being in consciousness it lasts and into pure, pure consciousness it dissolves at the root of everything is the feeling i am the state of mind there is a world is secondary for to be i do not need the world the world needs me and you see generally what happens is that we are so blinded by our desires and those desires are born out of preconceived ideas of what enlightenment should be what awakening should be so we are not ready to empty our cup and that is why ma sharda says what is the hari ma sharda was the wife of uh, advaita sage ramakrishna paramhansa she says what is the hari let it take its time and you know i get this question many times where people tell me that i have the intellectual understanding but when it comes to life i forget that i am not the doer and i react and i tell them what's wrong with that it's okay you forgot in the moment to forget in the moment is okay it was meant to happen that way you forgot you reacted perhaps you apologized whatever the situation was but then you after that the ego does not come up and say and beat you it does not say why did i react i am a horrible person i should not have done this because there is an understanding there and the understanding is with you it is very simple that you are not the doer a reaction happened because it was meant to happen so humility it begins with humility and then silence that is the first aspect the second as- aspect he says only a fully ripe gnani can allow himself complete spontaneity which simply means be the way you are now don't be the way you imagine yourself to be that's not what maharaj is saying maharaj is saying acting in complete spontaneity that means i become so rooted in the moment that all my actions become spontaneous i do not live identified with the past i do not let past define my actions i do not let an imaginary f- future which is born out of fear dictate my present actions my present actions are spontaneous when i am hungry i eat when i am sleepy i sleep when i want to drink water i drink water when i want to say something to another person i say something to another person when i want to feel like expressing myself i express myself when i feel like being silent i become silent but all of this is happening in the awareness of the being which is your true nature and that is your most natural state that is the i am so maharaj says that if the desires are weak then self reflection and contemplation can help dissolve them but what if my desires are very strong and i cannot get rid of them through thinking then maharaj says let the desires manifest 
go for it now either the desire will be fulfilled or it won't be fulfilled in both these cases what you will notice is that whether desire is fulfilled or not fulfilled there will not be peace because it is the very nature of desire the desire propagates further desire the desire never ends the craving and that is why silence is given so much importance in this teaching even here in the book it says that even bhagwan shri ramana maharishi imposed himself 20 years of silence before he began to teach 20 years of silence before he began to teach i had my first experience in 2015 till 2020 i was completely isolated i did not speak to anybody i was in complete isolation now i don't recommend that to anybody but i was not writing articles i was not making videos i was not talking about advaita i was simply watching my own mind in no way am i comparing myself to ramana maharishi we are nothing we are nobody we i am not a sage i am not a master but what i am saying here is that what i see is a lot of people who get a glimpse of the experience are in great hurry to teach something now i am not saying i am not invalidating their experience i am sure that they have had a genuine experience they have had great insights and they have some great pointers to offer but you see without humility and without experiencing the silence first you can never be completely embodied with the truth of what you are conveying so maharaj says i will read his words he says yes the inner fruit must ripen until then the discipline the living in awareness must go on gradually the practice becomes more and more subtle until it becomes altogether formless now when he talk, say, talks about discipline he is not talking about a forced discipline where you have to you know vigilantly watch yourself or where you have to force yourself to sit in meditation for hours that not that's not what he means what he is saying is simply watch be present with the vertical thought the single vertical thought i am and in that light of witnessing the truth will reveal itself and slowly what happens is that the awareness begins to shift from the gross aspect of life which is the mind the conditioned perspective to the subtle aspect of life which is the stillness the silence the silence of i am and the questioner says that even krishna murti speaks about living in awareness and look at maharaj's response he says krishna murti always aims directly at the ultimate even maharaj noticed this thing and confirmed it you see the brilliance of these people like these sages like nisargadatta maharaj or krishnamurti j krishnamurti was that they never objectified the source now we can call it source we can call it brahman or we can keep re- repeating the mantra brahman satyam jagat mithya but that is not going to help you if you keep objectifying the truth what you are creating you are creating a desire in your mind you are objectifying the source you are reducing something which is infinite 
so it is not going to help you because it will be a, a image in your mind an objectified image in your mind and images are always temporary so whenever whenever anybody approached maharaj and he said that i had this experience that experience maharaj would say no you are not that you are the one witnessing the experience anything that you can see through your touch through your senses see through your vision hear through your ears taste through your tongue or even conceptualize using your mind anything any image it is an appearance the screen of consciousness cannot be objectified that is why jiddu krishna murti deliberately did, uh, did not use words such as atman or brahman or chaitanyam or anything like that because these masters they did not want you to objectify the source because objectifying the source is futile because then it becomes a blind chase in search of enlightenment in search of in search of something which is nothing other than an image in your mind that is why advaita masters say that silence is important because only in silence you get to see the true reality or we can say that the reality gets seen it is not a personal seeing it is the impersonal seeing so i think we'll conclude for now i'll see you next time